Todd, with, with bolt action guns, I, I mean, I think when you think about this sport um, or this recreation that, that people do, whether they're hunters or competitors, um, or they actually do this as a profession, uh, a lot of people start off with that foundation of that, that, that traditional Remington 700. And I kind of look at it like the, you know, the uh, Ford Mustang. You know, you went, you bought the, you bought the Ford Mustang, and, and now later on, as you're getting more involved in, in the community, you're starting to think about, well, how do I soup it up? And, and the first thing that generally comes to mind is, is that stock. So I guess my first question to you is, um, is, is that a good upgrade to do to get a new stock for that gun? And then not only that, but is, as far as the community goes, there's that big old debate about whether I go, you know, with uh, glass bedding or, or pillars and, and is that really worth it? Yeah, I, I tell you what, let's just start out with a normal Remington action with okay. a, more of a traditional soft stock. You know, if you look here, this cheek weld is not adjustable. It's actually fairly low. All right, so we can't do anything with our recoil pad either. However, we do have a detachable mag, all right? So it just doesn't have a floor plate like we did in the past. We can actually okay. put a 10 round mag here, all right? The reason this is set up this high though, is some people say, yeah, but you actually need lower rings. Well, with the Pictini rail on the front of this weapon system here, it's set up so it aligns, all right, from the scope to your night vision. So you don't really have a choice of going up and down that much. So that's one of the disadvantages of having this type of system. But for a hunting stock, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it, it's a real nice system. Something you might want to upgrade to is something like this. This weapon here, again, detachable mag, plus now we get have adjustable cheek weld. All right, so this is actually really nice, good setup here good hunting style stock again but nearly a tactical stock and what you talked about a while ago this system would probably be glass bedded now they may actually remove a lot of this interior on the on the stock itself but you're probably going to have glass bedding on the action myself i mean if, if i was going to shoot a stock like this yes i'd go ahead and glass bed the action but okay i would rather go ahead and do the glass bedding on the pillar blocks on this, another type of action so first thing is i've got that you know, Mustang 5.0. I want. I want to start getting her supercharged. I want to get her primed up for race day. If if I'm looking at buying a new stock, what you're saying is the at a basic, I at least need to start working on some type of adjustability as far as length of pull, and then not only that, but comb height as well. Absolutely, and the comb height to me is actually even more important. Most of the time, people can shoot with a shorter stock. If you actually start pushing your stock out long, people start canning on the rifle to get their proper eye relief. So. The, the cheek weld is very important to have it adjustable. Okay. Now, the next step I look at is flexibility to the shooter, but there's also a practicality side of it, which is this bottom metal right here. And traditionally, I can feed rounds through through the receiver of the gun, or I can actually use what I'm used to using a lot of times, which is magazines. So what is your take on that, and, and what's the difference that, that you see as, as an instructor? Well, you know, as far as just the old, uh, floor plate on the bottom and where we could actually, you know, stack stack rounds through the, through the receiver, this actually is an upgrade. You know, we can run 10 round mags, and I can have two mags already preloaded in my pack. So this is actually much faster. You know, it, it's an upgrade, obviously. And it's one that I like, you know, as far as a hunting application, if you're out hunting in certain states, you can't have a 10 round mag, all right? Yeah, okay. so you may have to stay with the five round mag, but I mean, that's not a problem. You can you can utilize whatever you need for, for your hunting or tactical world that you're wanting to get into. Now, when I order these stocks, I have an option sometimes. Do I get the Ford Picatinny rail? Do I not? How do I know whether I need that or not? There's so many options out there. Um, do, do I get, you know, regular uh, sling attachments? Do I go with flush cups? Um, what's your take on that? You know, personally, I like the flush cups. You know, I, that's to me, that's a great device. You know, it, it, it's a great tool. Uh, but, you know, when you really look at it, as far as the Ford Picatinny rail, Obviously, with a tactical environment, you know, if you've got night vision, you want to hunt coyotes with night vision, that, that type of thing, this is awesome. You know, okay. it's real nice to have. You might want something that has more modularity uh, because it, whether you're running like FLIR hisses or DUNS or ADUNS or, you know, PVS 22s or 27s, whatever type of I squared device or thermal that you're actually utilizing, you may require more of a footprint. So sometimes you like the flexibility of something that has a full Picatinny rail. So it's, it's one of those things that you have to look at. You know, this has the flush cups, which are very nice. Uh, it has a bottom metal 10 round mag, you know, adjustable cheek weld. This is a very nice semi hunting, semi, you know, tactical stock that a guy could go out and enjoy all aspects of shooting.
Now, is your decision of whether to get side flush cups um, or just a normal sling attachment going to be based on your method of carry? Not only that, but if you were to go out and stalk or carry a weapon, um, where would you recommend, say, a righty or a lefty mount these things? Because sometimes, you know, the, the, they'll tell you, hey, you can put them on left, right, all over the place. And it's like, hey, can you narrow it down for me just a yeah, little bit? Yeah, you know, and, and this is something that just with playing with and which everybody should do. I like having them ambi because I'll actually place it on the left side forward, but I actually run my sling around over to the back side. And if you think about the physics of it, when you actually mount that weapon system, if that flush cuff is sitting right here and you tighten it up and you start to cinch down on it, the physics is wanting to lift out to where okay. the center of that flush cuff is. So your stock is actually rising. What I like to do is actually wrap it over the stock and stick it on the right side. So as I start loading up, the physics of that strap coming over and under is keeping that line even so the gun cannot rise up. So that's a very good question. So on a stock like this, this would be more of a glass bed. Yeah, actually this probably would be glass bed. Most of the time if, you know, traditional hunting stocks, I mean they glass bed the whole stock, you know, so it'll be glass bedded all the way up. Now what we've started doing a lot now, they'll actually free float this. So the barrel's full, full free floated, but they're still going to glass bed the actual action which in a system like this, you're gonna to have to do. You know, personally, myself, I'd rather have, you know, just bed the pillar blocks and have a free floating, you know, stocks. Now, what, to the, to the shooter at home, to spend that extra money, what is the benefit of, of having it glass bed? And then not only that, but going the extra mile now and actually making it to where it's more of a free float system. You know, what you're gonna find is the harmonics and, and really the, the free floating, barrel is really taking over right now you know you don't have any problems with warping and that kind of deal with the stocks that we're using today's market so you know you take a weapon system like this where this is full free floated right here and I did not even glass bed the pillar blocks on this weapon system and it's super accurate you know I'd rather stay away from it. glass bedding is going to degrade over time so it's something I'm actually want to stay away from it's real controversial some people aren't, don't want to do that some people agree with it personally that's the way I like to run you know, if you look at this weapon system here, you actually have the 2.0 folder from AI. And when you're talking about money from one stock to another, you know, most stocks are running six, seven, eight hundred dollars anyway. You know, and you can get this set up here for, you know, probably close to nine hundred just for the stock alone. And most of these stocks, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, as long as you have general mechanics awareness, you can actually put this thing together yourself. Whereas on some of the fiberglass model stocks, you're actually going to have to probably send that to a professional where Absolutely. they're going to have to cut that out and, and actually work it, work your action and your barrel, everything into that particular stock if you want it done right, correct? Absolutely, you have to have a little bit of knowledge and skill to actually okay. do that other job, all right? Now, I had a buddy uh, down in South Texas that actually took a normal hunting style action and barrel, cut it off to 16 inches, that's what he wanted, stuck it in himself late that night. I went down there to give him a little, you know, hog hunting class, long range thing. He stuck it in there and it was a quarter minute gun the next day. He had to do a little bit of work, not anything technical, just had to do a little, modification to the stock where it fit nice, torqued it down, and it was ready to go. And it was in a stock just like this, so it's real compact, all right? You take a stock like this and set it in an Everly stock pack, totally disappears. So it's the ease of carry, carrying it in and out, you're not dragging, you know, as far as the tactical world, you're not seen as being, you know, one of the snipers in the bunch. You don't have this big barrel sticking out of the, your pack. You know, again, you have the full adjustability right here with your cheek weld, it's a folder. This is an excellent stock, you know, but what you're fixing to see is an upgrade from this stock, even though you have Ford Pictini rail here, to go ahead and grab that AX stock. Now this is something totally unique and brand new. This stock here, again, we had the Ford Pictini rail, but it's tubular design, is is very nice. And I really think most of us- It's very light as well, uh, I guess. Super, super light. You know, and most of us, I think, will actually end up really liking this kind of stock. The Pictini rails are very modular. You can move them around any point that you want. It's very easy. You can drop a Remington action in it I right away. You can, you know, it has a length of pull. The comb's adjustable. Absolutely. Um, it also has a monopod on it. Um, what's your recommendation on running a monopod? Is it is it yeah, is it good to run it? You know. Personally, I don't like them. If I'm if I'm going to run one because I'm real high up in the back and I need a little bit more stability, I'll still put a sandbag underneath okay. it because the the harmonics of this touching the ground 
you'll start to see some degradation of accuracy at long ranges, personally, at least myself. So I don't like running monopods unless they're touching to a sandbag. And you know, there's proper uses of using a sandbag as well. Okay. But this is a real nice stock. It's, it's very new. It has a cutout design yeah, here on the side. I was gonna ask you about that. Uh, I noticed that on this, this portion is cut out. I know on the normal guns, it's not. Um, I know for doing magazine changes, a lot of times I'm having to muzzle down, get the mag out, throw a new one in because they are a little long. Um, I take it on this, you don't even have to now. No, right now, I'm gonna lay this on your shoulder, but right now, if I'm sitting up taking a shot and I reach down and I actually drop that mag out, I can grab another mag and I don't have to lift the gun up to shove it in. I can just reach in here with a slight angle and just roll it in. Now this is a great new design. I was very happy to see somebody come up with something like this. It was actually one of those things we just overlooked in the community for years. It, great design. And this is a, a stock that I think is gonna sell somewhere around $1,300. So when you look at it, by the time you modify and glass bed and do everything that you're gonna do to those other actions, all right, and getting that set up, you could do it yourself You're not at home. Pay that much more, that much more money having something that's really nice like this. So, bottom line is, first customization is trying to get a more practical stock on your gun, because based on what we learned in class, everything that we talked about as far as trying to get you behind that gun, directly behind that gun, set up in the right position, the way you need to, based on your scope and the way your gear set up, these stocks allow you that flexibility that you need. Side folder, probably easy to get the bolt out, I imagine, the cleaner as well. I know on some of mine, I actually have to pull the whole cheek piece out just to get my bolt out. So, you know, having a side fold in stock is a huge benefit. So as far as the first upgrade, if I had just a little bit of money and I was trying to look at things, this would be a good way to go. Absolutely, you know, personally, I think the first upgrade that I would actually do is possibly upgrade my barrel. Okay. All right? and, but this would absolutely be within one of the first one or two. If I had a good barrel and it was shooting accurately, there's no need to really upgrade it. But this is a great stock, something that you can do yourself. And it's not really that expensive in comparison for the modularity that you get out of it. So now those are upgrades for the Remington 700, but I could actually buy from a manufacturer something that's already set up, kind of like this, this TRG. So from the factory, I've already got this stock built in. Everything's good to go. Um, I can actually move the rear piece right here. Now this There's just is actually, a lot of options. You push in, it moves up and down very nice. You've got length of pull adjustments here. Your cheek weld, slide that up and down. All right, very quick without tools. That was the whole idea when we actually went and designed this was we didn't want to have to use tools to get the adjustments that we needed. Also, it's a very nice folder and the folders gives us the ability to not have to remove our cheek weld all right, to take the bolt out so we can actually clean the weapon. Plus, it conceals it. Portability. It makes it, portability makes it easier to pack in. Absolutely. Now, I guess the future is moving into, in regards to stocks, with everything that we talked about, is something like this Remington MSR right here, where I have a lot of modularity, adjustability, side folder, and this one also is multi-caliber, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely, it's, this is a state of art right now. This is something that I think that we're gonna see everybody start moving to a little bit more. Obviously, like a while ago when we was talking the different stocks, this one actually folds back over the bolt, which was a very neat design because now, if you're packing it in, it's slung over your back. You don't have a bolt sticking in the middle of your That's back. That's true. You know, or this sticking in the middle of your back. You can, it's more slimline, takes less, less space. All right, so if you look at it though, you've got the same adjustability here and here. So this is a really nice folder, all right? Everything's monolithic in the rail, meaning it's straight one line, it's on the same plane. You've got adjustability on, on your side Picatinny rails. It's a very nice system. You know, you have the ability to take off bipods like this and stow them, because when they're in the pack, this is the hardest thing to actually get out. So again, what we're looking at is modularity. Now with this system here, you can take out these two bolts and run about five off the top, slide this off, break that ring down and you can change the barrel out just like that. Then you change the bolt face. We can turn this 300 wind mag into a 338 Lapua in three and a half minutes. Wow. All right, and they are so accurate that you're not gonna be probably not more than three quarters of a mil off going from one caliber to the other. 
Now, as far as sticking my 338 barrel back on, it's going to be directly point aim, point of impact. We, did, wow. we don't have any shift, all right? So I was actually amazed. I was really a skeptic at first. You know, every time somebody comes up with something kind of new, and as far as changing barrels, that's not really new. We've been doing that in the past with other weapon systems. But as far as when you're talking long range, 338 Lapua, you know, shooting out to 1,500 meters, out to a mile to 2,000, you can't give up any accuracy. That's the reason that you're using that type of system. So I was a little bit hesitant thinking that we could just slam the barrel back on, tighten it up, torque it down, put all the accessories back on, and it actually impact at the same spot. But when we actually tried it, we took it off, put it back on, took it off, put it back on, same point of impact. It shot the same minute of angle that the gun could shoot. So I was actually really amazed. And now you can actually get this with a 308. Really, you can get this with anything that you want as far as caliber now. So you, if you want a 308, 300 Win Mag, 338 Lapua, it's not a problem. So it's almost like a one gun fits all. Absolutely, and when you think about price, even though this weapon system's probably in the neighborhood of about $7,000, you know, when you look at, hey, for another $1,000, I can have a different caliber. So I don't have to buy another $4,000 rifle. All I have to do is spend, you know, maybe 1,000, 1,300. I don't know the exact price of the caliber change, but it's gonna to be to where it's actually really inexpensive comparatively to buying a new gun. A whole new gun and going through the whole entire process Absolutely. that we just talked about. You can get a 260 for competition shooting, you know, very good caliber, a 65 by 47, any one of the good calibers that are out there today. And as well, that chassis is actually gonna be available for your Remington 700 sitting in your closet right now. So at that point, we can take that, we can really supercharge that car very quickly if that's what we choose to go with as far as mod modularity and flexibility on that stock system. Absolutely. Now, speaking about actions and barrels, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about your, your normal stock Remington 700 action. So I wanna to try to make this thing a little bit better in, uh, in a lot of readings and books, they talk about truing and blueprinting your action. What exactly is that? And then not only that, but what benefit am I going to get by, by sending my action off and having that done? And is it worth the money in your opinion? Yeah, you know, a lot of times the, the truing and blueprinting is actually making sure everything's true and straight, all right? So when you actually pay money to get that done, and there's nothing wrong with that. that I mean, I have several at the house that were done that way, custom guns are very accurate rifles. But by the time you take the money to do that, you know, to your Remington 700, you can actually go out and go ahead and buy a custom action, something like a Surgeon, all right? So in my, in my mind, it's worth the money to go ahead and step up, you know, and do like you, talk, you were talking about earlier, go ahead and step up and buy that a little bit more expensive product, but it's a lot better. Plus resale, if you ever wanted to later on, is gonna be worth a lot more money. So what I have here is a rifle from Tactical Rifles and they've trued and blueprinted this. So what you're telling me is I should get a lot better accuracy out of this particular Absolutely. gun yeah. because they spent the time to do that. Absolutely. And now is that lining the bolt up more dead center with the barrel or, or I guess what is the factory not doing that this custom gun shop like Tactical Rifles is doing with their guns? Because I know their actions aren't, aren't just trued and, and blueprinted, but I also know that they're very fast to move and manipulate. So I don't know if that's part of the process or if that's just a company spending a little bit of extra time, you know, putting a little bit more touch to it. Yeah, and I'm not a gunsmith, but you know, from what my gunsmiths actually tell me, they're, they're truing up the face of the bolt, all right? And they're truing up the face of the action where the barrel actually fits and comes in. So everything in that standard stock action isn't always necessarily true, you know, to where it's straight and in a line. That's where you get your accuracy, that with the barrel, all right? So with your chamber and everything that's done there. So when you look at it, it's worth spending the money to do it. You know, you don't have to. If you're going hunting with your Remington 700 that you bought stock somewhere at some gun store, you, no, nobody should tell you you have to do that. If it's a good, accurate gun, I've seen some super accurate rifles that weren't custom at all. But if you want to get the most out of the weapon system that you have, yeah, I, I would advise it very highly. Then these are all those little small things that start to add up to the bigger picture. Absolutely, you know, when you talk about you know shooting the distances that we've shot here, when you start talking about a minute of angle gun being good enough, in my opinion, that's not necessarily so. You know, when you're shooting out to you know 1,200 meters, out to 1,600 meters, you know, with a 308, if everything isn't really dead on, we're shooting half minute guns and sub half minute guns, and if you start shooting something that's a minute of angle. 
it's not going to be a minute of angle anymore once you get out to that distance. You know, theoretically and mathematically, you can say, well, if it's a minute at 100, it'll still be a minute at a grand. But somewhere in between, things just start to wall They start out. to get a little yeah. fatter. Now, if I want to spend the extra money, I can get something like this surge in action that's in this Nighthawk. So just kind of like going to the dealership, I guess, and, and do an immediate purchase on, on that Cobra. Cobra Mustang, and instead of yeah. trying to trick out my 5.0, I can just go right for the Cobra. Um, what what exactly is being done? Because you you had mentioned that hey, if I if, if I'm going to go out and and start looking at this very serious, instead of buying that Remington, sending it off to a gunsmith, having them work on it and manipulate it, I could just buy this thing right off the bat because I've spent all that money. I could have had this in the first place. So what exactly is this? Is, is this a factory product? Where exactly does this fall into? Yeah, Surgeon Actions is, in my opinion, is probably the best custom action on the market today. It has an integral rail. That rail is actually one piece into the system. It's not screwed on. So those four screws aren't gonna come loose on you because they aren't there, all right? So it, it's a real nice high-end, true doubt, it, it's, it's been, proven in competition it's been proven by tons of shooters that have actually shot it you know it's i'm not to say that other actions aren't good actions this is an action that we've actually tested and tried and, and it's actually worth the money when you actually start looking at the money that you're going to spend if you want to upgrade your remington 700 at home before you spend that money it's really a good idea to go ahead and talk to somebody like surgeon and, and compare prices before you just start spending money on the action you have at home at one time, you could actually have two guns instead of one and, and possibly not be out that much more money. Now, I noticed on a lot of these, um, at least a new, the, the flavor seems to be having, having more of an aggressive or fatter bolt. Yeah, the, we call them speed knobs, all right? But the, the way we manipulate the knob, you know, for speed shooting, you'll actually, as you squeeze the trigger, you'll lift the bolt with this finger and you run it back and then you'll slam it back home with your thumb and then your hand's already in position. So you can actually run that knob very fast. And that's something, you know, that with how much throw the bolt actually has. You know, some, some bolts are actually have more throw than others, which inhibit, you know, the speed side. So it, it's something, you know, we have straight action or straight bolt pulls uh, in some weapon systems. You know, you have some that are, you know, traditional with, a, with more throw on them. And it's something, that whatever you're wanting out of your system, you don't have to necessarily go out and spend the money to have a short throw. But it's, it's something, if you're going to spend the money, it's something that you might want to look at. Speaking of that, on this gun, I guess there's actually a different throw degree on here. And what's the benefit of that? Yeah, this is actually pretty short, you know, and, and it's really nice and really fast, like we talked about earlier. You know, and, and with this action, it's, it's a really smooth action. And, you know, the Saco action has always been one of the nicest actions, in my opinion, that you can buy off the shelf. Really, you don't have to do a lot of work to this, you know, and, and we've actually thought about building some custom guns on this action because it is such a nice, smooth action, and it's really fairly inexpensive. And then, of course, I guess we can go back to the MSR right here, and this one has, correct me if I'm wrong, an even shorter throw. Yeah, actually, it, it's deceiving. It doesn't look it, like it, but, you know, really, that bolt's pointing out here like this and only lifts that much. So it, this it really is a truly fast, fast action. The reason this is dip, dipped down so far is so that the stock will actually fold over it. But you know, when you line up on it, you actually are able to pull, lift that up, and run it back pretty fast. So one, you can stay on target pretty quick. You can actually see your impact and, and run from there. Now I know that, you know, of course, we're talking long range, so speed is fine and accuracy is final. But if we have this particular system right here, then what we're looking at as far as bolt manipulation is maybe actually being able to manipulate and get a new round in there faster than we could have maybe before with a standard one, which means that I'm kind of weighing, I don't think I have enough time, I broke my shot, I need to see where that splash is, and I don't want to risk coming off by manipulating my bolt, so now I actually might be able to get away and then get a second shot on Absolutely. there faster. If, if I'm running something that has a shorter throw. You know, and, and we talked about it a little bit earlier about rapid bolt manipulation. You know, if I'm shooting something fairly close, I wanna shoot, gain the knowledge that that bullet has to give me. As soon as, I, as soon as I see my impact, whether I miss or not, then I can run my bolt very fast and get back on target and send a second shot. However, when you have something like this that has more of a speed knob and a short throw and this weapon system being fairly fast other than it's a long action, the shorter actions obviously are a little bit faster. 
But when you have the option, if you're shooting out to 900 or even if, if you get good at running speed, you know, as, as far as bolt manipulation, you can actually take a shot at maybe 700 meters, take the shot, run the bolt fast, and be waiting to gain that knowledge of where your bullet's impacting. As soon as it impacts, we want to send the next round in the closest, in, or as close to the same environment as we did the first round. So I'm already set back up, looking, having my hold. Shooting in the same, you know, making your adjustment, shooting in that same wind you just broke that shot in, instead Absolutely. of waiting a, a few more seconds, as we saw, a few more seconds can change what's happening as far Especially as the environment. Especially out here is. in this wind. <laughs> Awesome. So the next thing I want to talk about is, is barrels. Everything ranging from 308. I know traditional Marine Corps is 308 with a 24 inch barrel. I know that your standard wind mags range between anywhere, you know, 22 to 26 inches, possibly even with a 338. Um, I know that some barrels are, are thinner in profile, some are a lot heavier. So I guess what I'm looking for is some type of direction of how short does my barrel need to be based on the caliber in which I'm shooting and are are there any benefits to the longer barrels or shorter barrels or what is also going to happen? I know it's a lot of questions in one. What is also going to ha uh, happen by trimming my barrel profile down because I think like you had said earlier, the barrel selection is very, very important. So I'm getting ready to make this purchase, totally soup up this, this, this car that I've got now, and this barrel is, is, is a very important aspect of it. Do I go, you know, long barrel, short barrel, how thick do I make it? What's your take on that? All right, and I'll just give you a little background what I've been through, all right? Initially, I was the guy that wanted to shoot further, 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 so I was actually wanting to go longer, longer, longer with Makes my sense. barrel. But actually, what you find out, you know, you can hand load it to where you get full burn on your powder, even out on those longer barrels, all right? But what I actually realized uh, working, you know, through the problem and doing the testing, we started out with 338s with 27 inch barrels was normal for them. So we started out there and I started looking at portability and concealability. So started cutting back to 25 and 23 and 20 and 18 and actually shooting all of them. What I found was, you know, 18 was too short. I even think 18 is too short for a 308 bolt gun for what the, you want out of a bolt gun. And, you know, not saying that a 16 inch gas gun is too short, but for what you're actually buying a bolt gun for, in my opinion, 20 inches was the limit. Same with the 338. 20 inches actually gave me the most performance. Now, I, I, don't, I can take off a little bit of the weight, but that wasn't really what I was looking at. What I was wanting to do was maybe even get a heavier barrel slightly, all right, to where I could actually have a more rigid barrel so the harmonics wouldn't affect me as much. And what I actually found was I have nearly zero impact shift with my Surefire cans and my groups at a mile was actually smaller than my 27 inch barrels. You know, my son shot that uh, five shot group at a mile at 15 inches and when he was 14 years old the first time. That gun I know with some other units in the military has actually shot when we were testing it, has shot a 19 inch group at 2,000 meters. So I, kn I know that the short barrel systems, you know, at first everybody said, no, it won't work, Todd, you're losing too much muzzle velocity, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when we actually put it to the test, I'll never own another 338 over 20 inches. You know, if you're gonna shoot 20 or 23, some people look, hey, I might go kind of in the kind interim in at 23 or 25. If you're not gonna shoot a 20, personally, I'd go straight to the 27, get everything that it could get out of it, you know? So I really like, the shorter barrels, maybe possibly a little fatter, a little stiffer barrels, all right, so my harmonics are less. Now, that's, it doesn't matter whether it's 308, 300 Win Mag, 338, your, what you've found, the data that's, that you've seen is shorter barrel, stiffer barrel. A absolutely, actually we went from shorter barrels not only on our 308s and 300 Win Mags at 20 inches and our 338s at 20 inches, so for whatever reason, that 20 inch just keeps coming back as a super accurate barrel length, you know, and as far as contour, you can do a lot of different things. You know, you can make, obviously, if you're going hunting with it and you're hiking all over Colorado or somewhere, you wouldn't want a real heavy barrel. But if you're in a more tactical environment or a, you know, a competition environment where you're looking at that pure precision, sure. that's something that you might want to go ahead and take on and carry with a little bit more extra weight. It's going to help in the recoil. It's going to help with harmonics. It's going to help with uh, impact shift when you put your suppressor on. Now, the, now the next subject that I'm going to bring up is, is more of a cosmetic to me, and that is fluting. Um, are there 
benefits that you see to fluting? I mean, as, as uh, above and beyond cosmetics. I mean, I can look at a, a gun that's fluted, or I forget what they call it when they've got that like twist going down the side. Yeah. All looks great, but is there a practicality side? Is there a positive or negative side to that? What's your take on that? That's a good argument because you're going to hear both sides from a lot of different people. Uh, fluting, you know, at first they say, well, it helps in the cooling because it gives you more surface area contact. But a lot of people that, you know, I highly respect have actually agreed that it doesn't give you any better cooling effect, you know, for your barrel. But as far as weight loss, yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing. You know, you have to be careful that the barrel has proper stress relief from the factory because once you remove that material, the barrel, if it has stress in it, actually may impact somewhere else, you know. So it may not be lined up, you know, and it may not be as accurate as it was prior to removing the, you know. And some people are real anal about actually taking any cuts off that barrel once it comes back from the factory. But, you know, for myself, I wouldn't have a problem with fluting. You know, I have a three, uh, fluted 300 wind mag. You know, it's a very good, very accurate barrel, and we actually stick it in that MSR and run it. Uh, myself, I'd rather go with shorter. All right, and then contour the barrel. I'm not a big flute person myself. You know, that's not something that personally I'm looking to do. So more practicality is, is your side of the house. Now that, that leads in, you mentioned contour. So it, you, had, you had said earlier that as long as I'm doing long range, if I'm worried about that really, really crisp precision shot, then the heavier barrel is the way to go. Is there a major loss in, you know, kind of tapering down that barrel? You know, what you're going to see is as the barrel heats up and you have that suppressor on it, or, you know, even if it doesn't have a suppressor on it and it's a thin barrel, that barrel's going to droop as it heats up, especially when you're shooting big calibers like a 338 Lapua. You know, uh, me and Eddie was out shooting a 338 that he had, a hunting type weapon system, and after the third shot at 1,200 meters, we were a half mil low. Oh, wow. So you it's know, already so, and affecting then once it you cooled that down, fast. And it didn't take long to cool down because it was a thin profile. But once it cooled down, it was right back on track again. Now, some people say, yeah, but all I need is, you know, one or two shots. Well, obviously, in a hunting situation, really, that's what you're hoping for, you know, is you may only have one or two shots, and then you can make that adjustment. Obviously, you can, and that's the give and take that we have to look for in a lot of equipment choices when you go up, you know, and you're packing your weapon system and going up high. You know, it, it depends. Do you want a shorter barrel that's a little bit fatter, maybe the same, you know, weight as a longer barrel that's maybe, you know, tapered down or fluted. So it's one of those things you're going to have to make up your mind for yourself. But personally, I like shorter barrels. I like stiffer barrels. You know, for hunting rifles, you kind of have to weigh, you know, what you want out of it. You know, personally, an eight, nine pound gun is a, is a really nice system, maybe even 10 pounds. But when you start sticking in a 338 Lapua, it's a lot of gun to try and hang on to. And really, it's not that it's that hard of a gun as far as kicking, you know, it's recoil. But once you take that shot, you still need that knowledge of where that bullet hit. You need to call that shot for yourself. And with a super lightweight gun, it, sometimes the closer ranges, it's hard to actually, you know, know where that bullet struck. So what we're looking at is, if I'm limited on funds, my question to you is, what are the first pieces that we've covered that you would have done to a gun? Um, and then, of course, if I'm not limited to funds and I, I have the funds available, I can just make a purchase, what would be your, your recommendation on things, to, a couple options to take a look at as far as instead of spending, you know, over a period of time, $3,000, hey, just take $4,000 and buy this. You know, the first thing I do is put a good trigger in your weapon. You know, a lot of people, and this is, again, it becomes controversial because I shoot a pound and a half trigger on all my guns. You know, that doesn't mean everybody needs to do that. You know, so depends on what you're doing. If you're tactical, as you know, you may not need a pound and a half trigger. You got other people around you constantly moving through rooms, doing the whole deal. Even if you're hunting with buddies and you don't feel comfortable with a pound and a half trigger, then you don't need one, you know. So for myself, for that pure precision, I think a nice, clean, trigger break is, is very important. And I want, you know, minimal probably two and a half pounds. And that's a good average number, two and a half, three pounds for most people. And, and, and it's very safe, it's not a problem. And we have triggers that, are, that can be safe at that light weight. So that's the first thing I do. The second thing I do is if your gun isn't accurate, I'd replace the barrel. And if it is accurate, then I would upgrade, you know, to some of the stocks that we've actually looked at to give you that modularity and some of the other options that we've seen. All right, awesome. Thanks, right. that's really good knowledge, man.